guys, so today I thought I would just sit down and chat with you about our 2018 to 2019 homeschool curriculum. My son will be going into the fourth grade this year, but I will also be talking a lot about the curriculum that we used in third grade, what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, what curriculum we plan to stick with into his fourth grade year, what curriculum we plan on trashing, not using anymore. I'm also going to talk to you guys about my opinion on the good and the beautiful. It is such a hot topic here on YouTube these days, and we have not used it yet, but I have watched tons and tons of videos on it. Videos of people literally gushing about it and how much they love it. Videos of people just showing what's in the books and just literally doing a review on it. And then I've also watched videos of people that have literally titled it, Why I'm Not Using the Good and the Beautiful. So I'm going to talk about why through all of that I have decided to use the good and the beautiful for some of our subjects this year and why even the videos talking bad about it actually made me want to use the curriculum. I really want this video to be chock full of information for you guys and helpful. I get a lot of questions about how to get started doing homeschooling and really my biggest advice is just to go on YouTube and watch videos about all of the different curriculum that's out there and you can watch detailed videos, reviews. That's another thing. I will be semi doing like a mini review on the curriculum that we used last year in this video, but if you want me to do like an entire video reviewing a certain curriculum, then let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I won't do that because I feel like I don't know, I just don't know how many people will be interested in that, so I don't want to do it unless there is a lot of interest. So definitely leave a comment below if you want to see that. But if my little mini review in this video is enough for you, then that's what we'll stick with. So first, let's start with math. This past year, in the middle of Carter's third grade year, we used Math UC. So we used gamma, which is single and multiple digit multiplication. This was right on for where he needed to be when he left public school in the middle of the year. This is actually meant for an entire year, but we finished it in one semester because he was already, like he already had covered basically the first half of this book in public school. So we just kind of skated through the first half and then really focused on the second half after that. But we love this and we will be purchasing the next one, which is, I believe it's called Delta and that one covers division. I loved this program. Now, quick disclaimer, this is the only math program I've ever tried for homeschooling, but I have watched tons of reviews on other math programs and I just don't see one that can beat this. One con I would say is that it is kind of pricey, but if you think about it, it's only pricey up front at the beginning and then it gets cheaper, especially if you have multiple children, you can reuse basically everything except for maybe the notebooks. Like we wrote in the actual notebook, it was nice to just have it all together. But if I wanted to, I could have just taken um, copies of this so I could save it for a future child but I didn't do that. Okay, so I want you to quickly, quickly, quickly just say why we're sticking with this program. One, I love, love, love how many worksheets are in here. There is a ton, you guys. So basically there is seven worksheets front and back for each lesson, and then there is a test for each lesson, which I really like having tests. Um, I would honestly like to have them for every single subject that we do, but especially math. And the only, only reason, not to like keep track of grades in our homeschooling, but the only reason is just to see where my child is. To really see something concrete that tells me, okay, he is understanding this concept, it is time to move on, or oh, he's not really getting it, we need to focus on this a little bit longer and then maybe retest. So. I love that. And not only do they have a test for each lesson, they also have unit tests. So like the first unit test is after the first like six or seven lessons, something like that. And there's a couple more unit tests and at the end there's a final test. And Carter did really amazing on most of these tests. So I was very proud of him, but it was just really good to see that he was in fact ready to move on. Another thing I liked about this program was the DVDs. I don't have them in my hands right now, but 
I personally like the DVDs not because they're the most entertaining or fun. Like I've seen, I think it's called Teaching Textbooks. I've seen some reviews of that online and it's very colorful and it's like a computer game and it's more interactive in that way. But I just don't see that as being realistic for the rest of their lives. I wanna prepare my kids for college and I don't know, that just doesn't seem realistic to me yet. But every kid is different. For my kid, he can learn from these DVDs. What I like about them is it's just a teacher. He looks like a professor. Like in college, I took a lot of math, which is why math is my favorite. And he just reminds me of one of my college professors. Most importantly, what I liked is that it is a mastery program. So basically, you master single and multiple digit multiplication before you move on to division, which I think just makes sense for math because math is so foundational. I think a lot of people struggle with math because they got lost at some point. They didn't fully learn or understand something in math in their career of school and <laughs> their career of school and their school career. And if since they didn't understand that, they didn't understand most things after it because you needed to understand that to understand the other things. That makes sense. So, and then it just gets frustrating and confusing and of course it would be. So I think having a mastery program, really making sure that they understand the concept before moving on makes sense. However, a con that I have seen on some reviews online is that since it is a mastery program, if you threw your kids back into public school, they would be ahead in some areas and behind in others. And I don't know if that's necessarily true. Coming from a mom that used to have a kid in public school, when I pulled him out in the middle of third grade, he like was learning the stuff that is in this book. And there is no way that they would have had enough time in that second semester of third grade to get to division. So I don't think that just because there's no division in this and it starts in the next book that that would make him behind because there's no way they could really hit division hard enough to where the kids would understand at the end of third grade. And it's not just like multiplication problems. You learn about how to find the area of something, the perimeter of something. You learn about um, different units like how many inches are in a foot or how many quarts are in a gallon. Uh, there's tons of word problems, which I love because word problems can be trickier. So I try to make sure that my son really um, does a lot of those word problems. But yeah, so I kind of disagree with that, but I'm not a teacher. So yeah, like I'm not in the public school system as a teacher. So I don't know for sure. Um, I already talked about the price being kind of a con. Oh, one thing I will say is we did not use the blocks at level gamma i just did not feel like we needed the blocks okay next let's talk about english so we are making a big change with english we this year we used a few different curriculum for english which is another reason why i'm excited to make a switch because i like being more minimal and i like having things all together like that was something i just loved about the math you see is that it's just all together spoiler alert we are going to be using the good and the beautiful for english but i will get to that in a minute first i thought i would show you what we used last semester for the middle the second semester of third grade we used spelling you see so it's kind of on the flip side i loved math you see they're by the same um, company but I didn't love spelling you see, and I'm honestly surprised that I didn't love it or even really like it that much. Um, so there's a few reasons. The pros of this program, at least that I thought, was that it's just copy work. There is no um, memorizing of spelling lists, which I feel like is not very effective. That's what my son had done all through um, his public schooling career. And while he, you know, he knows how to spell things, whatever, I just really didn't think it was effective or necessary to have all the crying and the stress of memorizing spelling words. There are a lot of other things in this world that you can focus on just memorizing. And I just, I didn't feel like that was effective. So I thought doing copy work would be really useful. And maybe it is for some kids, but for my son, I feel like he didn't really benefit from it, um, which I'll touch on that more in a second. But another thing I didn't like about it, so I didn't feel like the copy work was that, I don't know, I just didn't feel like it was getting the job done well enough. But then another thing I didn't like is you are doing the same thing every single day, every single week. 
you have a paragraph and it's about American history, which was another thing I thought was cool, but it's such a short little paragraph. You don't learn that much anyway. Sometimes it would start a conversation or we would look up something further, but for the most part, it was just a silly little paragraph on American history. So I didn't really think it was that great. But um, you, the first day you just co literally copy some of the paragraph and you do some highlighting of, let's see, this one's consonant chunks. And then you move on and do a little bit more of that same paragraph the next day. Same thing the next day, just like the last part of the paragraph. And then on Thursday, you would do um, where you read it aloud to them and they write it out themselves. You cover this side, and um, but you can kind of help them. And this is kind of like the pre-test. Um, he would usually struggle more on this and then we would go over the words that he misspelled or the grammar that he missed and then um, He would do a lot better on the final test where you get no help So in a way I felt like this was useful. I did like that. They kind of threw in some grammar I like combining subjects in that way. So I liked that but I just didn't feel like he really learned a ton from this and it was just so boring doing that same thing day after day after day. So that is why we will not be continuing with this. We do have like a whole other book. Um, we have like the second half of this. So if we wanted to, we could use it, but I don't really see us using it. Another thing we used was fix it grammar. Now I liked this a lot more than I liked spelling you see. It was very quick. You just edit like one sentence, four days a week, not even five days a week. And it covers a lot of grammar. And at the end, you're editing a whole story, which Carter, my son, did like. And um, you write it in a different notebook. And so sometimes we would read through what he had written and it was interesting to read the story. So in that way, oh, and you had a kind of spelling, or not a spelling word, like a vocabulary word that you would write in the back of your notebook. And I liked the vocabulary words. I would encourage him when he was writing on his own um, to use some of the vocabulary words in his writing. So, and that way I liked it, but I just didn't love it. There was just something missing from it. And so, I don't know, we'll see. I would, I'm not saying that I dislike this. I'm just saying that I feel like something is missing. So. What we will be using this year is the good and the beautiful. Now, I am so excited to try this out because a lot of YouTubers that I love and respect have raved about this curriculum. So I'm really excited to try it. And one of the things that they have said is that it's creative and it's, um, it's not the same thing every day. So it keeps your child's interest and it combines the spelling, the grammar, the reading, all of that into one curriculum which is nice um also we did the assessment so it has like i think there's like pre-k primer k um k level one level two level three four i don't know so we did the assessment online which i thought was great that they had that and he passed level one with flying colors got 100 percent um then we got to level two and he passed the reading like almost 100%. He may have gotten one or two words wrong, but you were allowed to miss like four. But once we got to the grammar and the spelling, he really struggled and he did not pass, which means that he needed, he needs to stay on level two. And I really feel that's because these two programs weren't doing their job. I feel if these two were doing their job and we started in the middle of the year, I honestly feel that the public school system does not do a good enough job with grammar and kids. I feel like I struggled a ton. I was an avid reader. I love to read. I'm a pretty decent writer. Um, I'm just an English kind of oriented person in that way. I'm also kind of math oriented, but um, I struggle with grammar even to this day. And I really feel it's because I did not get a strong foundation when I was in elementary school, middle school, even high school. So um, I just think that it's a common thing. I think grammar is tough and kind of tedious. So I just think it's important, so important to give your child that gift of understanding grammar. So I don't know. I just don't think those programs did a good enough job. So I am excited to 
try out the good and the beautiful and there are a lot of ladies I trust that say that it is very good and there aren't gaps and holes in the program so I'm super excited about that. One thing I want to say about The Good and the Beautiful is there is some controversy surrounding it, at least that I have seen on YouTube, and that is because the lady who created the program is Mormon, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with being Mormon, I just want to say that. But I think some Christians that aren't Mormon, just like Christians, whatever, um, they, don't, they don't understand Mormons, and they kind of... I don't know. I feel like a lot of people don't even realize that Mormons believe in Jesus Christ. I know a little bit about Mormons because my best friend is one, but anyway, I am not Mormon and I would not want my curriculum to teach the Mormon doctrine. That would bother me very much, but it is separate. So she, I think her name is Jenny, something like that. She created the program um, with the Mormon religion is not in it. She even had some like Christians review it and help her out with that. So it is just purely Christian. I think you can like purchase a Mormon add-on or something if you are Mormon. Um, so that doesn't bother me at all. Like it just, it just doesn't. So that's one thing that I've seen is kind of controversial and it really does not bother me one bit. I, um, I know I can decipher for myself if there was anything in it. I like Christian based programs. I will say that I like that a lot. I like things that talk about building character, being a good person, everything. So that part of the program I love. And if there was anything that I felt was kind of weird or didn't follow what we believe, I would either leave it out of the lesson or I would use it as something to talk to my son about. Like, some people believe this, but for these reasons, we don't believe it or I don't believe it. What do you think? So that's how I would address that. Two, um, I watched a video of a girl talking about, I think it was a couple people, I don't know, that mentioned how, I think it was in level two, that it compares a book called The Diary of a Wimpy Kid, which a lot of boys, maybe even girls too, but a lot of kids have read, saying how that book is not good and beautiful, saying why it's not good and beautiful, because it encourages making fun of parents and um, it encourages revenge and different things like that. And I understood where the girl was coming from. I don't know, I'm not gonna totally speak for her, but from what I got out of her video, she was saying that um, she, it seemed like she thought it was judgmental and wrong to put down people like it was making a parent feel like oh since I let my kid read the diary of a wimpy kid I'm a bad parent. I don't think that's the case. I had already had it on my heart and on my mind that I needed to monitor what my son watches whether it's on YouTube, on Netflix, anything. I was already thinking about how I need to be more strict about that. I really need to monitor it. I need to go with my gut. There was a show he was watching that was geared towards his age, but there was it's like some millionaire or something show, The Little Boy's a Millionaire, and his robot maid is a teenage girl and she's dressed in a maid costume. And when I saw that, I was like, whoa, like that, my nine-year-old should not be watching something that has that. And they would do like close-up shots like of the boy, but you would see the bottom half of the girl. Weird. So at first I was like questioning myself, but then I thought about it more. I was like, no, I am his mother and I need to protect him from things like that. And I have the right to say, you're not allowed to watch that. So that kind of stuff was already on my mind. So when... Um, and then there are shows like that, just like The Diary of a Wimpy Kid. There are shows on Netflix like that that make fun of parents and, you know, um, just encourage some things that as an adult you can watch a show like that and think, oh, that's funny, it's just a joke. Um, but as a child, you may not get that it's just a joke because you have a child mind and you may take it to heart and start mimicking some of those qualities. So in that way, I'm actually really gl glad that this curriculum talks about that because it will help me convey to my son why I have these rules because I truly believe as a parent, it is your job to protect your child and teach your child and just saying because I said so is not enough. If you truly want your child to grow up and continue to follow what you taught them into high school and college and adulthood, you need to explain to them why you are, you know, putting these rules in place. So I think that this will just be an extra tool for me. So I'm actually super excited for the good and the beautiful, even after I watch the bad reviews on it. Anyway, we shall see though. 
Um, so yes, we're getting the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts Level 2. We will be getting any books that they suggest, like chapter books. That's another thing I'm really excited about the Good and the Beautiful about is that they um, give lots of chapter book suggestions that go along with what they're reading, which I struggle and with their level of reading. And I struggle sometimes to find books that are one on my son's level. Sometimes we'll buy a book and it'll be too difficult for him to read and so he won't want to read it even though the content was something he was interested in. Um, so I'm excited for someone to tell me, hey, when you're on this level, your child's on level two so they um, are going to be able to read this book and it has to do with the schooling. And it's a good and beautiful book. It's I won't have to read the book and make sure there's nothing inappropriate in it. Someone has already done that for me. I'm also going to get the creative writing notebook. I was really excited when I saw that on the Good and Beautiful website because um, my son is a very, very good creative writer. He really enjoys writing and so I think having something to encourage that and nurture that will be great. Um, and then we are going, we're doing a lot of the good and the beautiful guys and I'm very excited and I may not like it and that's fine. Like uh, the year wasn't wasted because we used this and I didn't end up liking it. He still learned things. I just felt like he didn't learn enough and I'm learning on the way, you know? So anyway, um, we are also going to be, um, using the good and the beautiful for science. However, I'm going to supplement things. I'll probably supplement things into all of these programs, um, but it's nice to know I don't necessarily have to. But for science, um, they do have a chemistry. They have multiple subjects that you can choose from, and they're very affordable. That's another great thing about the good and the beautiful. Very affordable. But um, there's a chemistry one, but they kind of re recommended it for like the lowest grade being fifth. So sometimes when I reach too high, I just end up stressing my son out, and I don't want to do that. So. We may just stay away from their um, chemistry curriculum, but we will use like our periodic table tiles that we got on Amazon. I'll have links down below guys too. Um, but so we'll be like memorizing the periodic table, things like that. I'm gonna get a looping basket or I'm gonna do the looping basket for this, which is basically um, if you have like a few subjects that you don't plan on doing every single day, you just do it on a loop instead of having the subjects Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then if you miss a Friday, you're all off, you just do it on a loop. So you just do it, um, you know, even if you miss a school day, it doesn't matter because you don't have to do it on a specific day. You just said, okay, we did science a couple days ago, so now we're doing history. So that's how I plan on doing that. And if you guys are interested in that basket, just let me know and I may share that. Um, but like I said, only if people are really interested in it. Um, so we are going to get the one on water. I think it's called Water of the World. I love water. Water. It is such an interesting molecule. And when I saw that, I was like, what? Yes. It's fascinating. I mean, we are bodies are made up of mostly water. The earth is made up of mostly water. It is a fantastic, fantastic thing and it is so interesting. I studied it a small amount in college and it was so fascinating. So we're going to do that. Uh, but I don't think we'll start with that one because that's a little bit more in depth. I think we're going to start with the science one. There's like space exploration one, which with that I'm going to get what you aren't being told about astronomy. There are some DVDs made by a guy who was, I believe he was an atheist, and then after studying space or whatever, became a Christian, something like that. So it's Christian based, which I like, as I've said. So I'll probably combine that. We also have a telescope, so we could use our telescope. So space, I don't see as like for science, like astronomy, I don't see that as something that you really need to know unless you like specialize in that as you grow up. But I think it's a fascinating thing and it can just nurture his desire to learn and teach him that learning new things can be fun and exciting. So I'm excited about that. And we may do, I don't think the science um, curriculums last the whole year, so we may get one more. I was thinking it might be about the human anatomy one or doing something on arth arthropods or I think that's what it's called <laughs> and getting like a butterfly. Um, you know, a caterpillar that turns into a butterfly, that would be fun. So anyway, that's what we're doing for science. Oh, and then there are like a whole bunch of books that they recommend that go with each of these curriculums, a bunch of like picture books and chapter books and stuff. So we will definitely get those. Um, let's see. And then for history. Okay. So last 
semester, I didn't get a history curriculum. I just couldn't find one that I liked. Spoiler alert, I'm getting the good and the beautiful. I'm just gonna start with volume, or is it volume? Level one, whatever. I'm just gonna start with the first one because I, I think that that's how it goes. It was kind of confusing, but I think that's how it goes. Like, you don't just start on level two just because your kid's a little bit older. Just starting at level one and you can probably make it through all of them before high school. So we're gonna get level one. And, but anyway, um, last year all I did, I got the Story of the World DVDs, um, which I really liked. Story of the World actually has like a workbook that you can do with it, but I just didn't hear a lot of good reviews on it. A lot of people said they didn't like it that much. I even listened to, on my favorite podcast, What Should I Read Next? I listened to her interview, Ann Bogle interviewed a little boy, and he said that he like disliked that book, because, and I really feel it was because he was doing the workbook with it. Um, whereas with my son and I, we just listen to it like an audiobook in the car and we need to get the, we've already finished volume one and two, which I'll link these below. Um, so we need to get the third, I think there's, thir there's at least four volumes. So we'll get those and we'll listen to that. And that's all we really did for history the past semester. So I knew that it was lacking and I was really excited to see that the good and the beautiful had a history program. Um, and they don't just focus on like one period in time. And so they keep it interesting by kind of like going through multiple time periods. Um, so I like that. And apparently they will talk about things that are happening on opposite sides of the world at the same time. So that's cool. Um, so we're gonna be getting that. I'm gonna get all of the chapter books that go along with that. I'm really excited about that. Oh, and there's a board game that they have with um, the history and that, um, my son loves board games. He makes up board games. He's a board game fanatic. So that will be great. I know that we will love that. And that's another thing about the good and the beautiful that I've been learning is it's very family oriented. So if you're kind of wanting your kid to be completely, if you're wanting to be hands off, this may not be the program for you. I think it's way more of a hands on program than some others, but I don't think that means that you can't, you know, like okay read this and you go and do something or whatever so if you have tons of kids i have heard it may be difficult to do this program but i've also seen moms that have like four kids that do it um so yes we'll be getting story of the world uh when i talk about math oh another math thing i'm going to be getting is the foundations in personal finance for homeschoolers um by dave ramsey this is meant for kids there's dvds and a workbook apparently it's really interesting and I totally feel like in public school, they should teach kids about finances. I don't understand why that's not one of the most important topics because the world revolves around money and you know, it's just such an important thing to know as you grow up. So I don't know. So I'm very excited about that. Okay, I think that's all the curriculum that I'm going to be ordering. There are a few like little supplemental things that I will be getting, but I will just talk about that in the unboxing where I show you guys all of the stuff that we're going to be using this year. Um, but in this video, I just wanted to kind of review the curriculum we have already used, let you know what we're um, still using and what, we, um, what we're going to be doing in the, this fourth grade year. And so, yeah. I hope this video wasn't too long, but I hope that it was also helpful if you have been looking into any of these companies, any of these curriculums, and you're just kind of uncertain what to go with. I hope that um, maybe this video helped you. And if you have any questions, please, please, please leave them below. I always want to help you guys, inspire you guys, and um, yeah. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.